Hi, I'm Ashley Swartz, CEO and founder of Furious Minds here in New York. This is my weekly segment. We've been off for a couple weeks. We've been busy with a few summits on RTB and online video and with Ad Week. I uh, invite you to be part of the conversation as always. Email me at ashley at furious-minds.com if you want to suggest some topics or have some feedback or call me on my BS. Happy to hear it. So it's been a crazy couple weeks. We've been talking a lot about video, and I've actually been talking a lot with my clients about this sort of need to shift from a TV everywhere proposition that unifies video across platforms to a video everywhere proposition. Um, you know, there is this need to sort of unify the ecosystem, and there's this crazy confluence of events. I just want to talk about some stats and some stuff that came out the last couple of weeks, and what this means for us as an industry holistically in moving the needle as far as audience participation goes with content and engagement and in monetizing and strategies of, of broadcasters. So it started with, you know, last week there was a Wall Street Journal article that came out about the fall season premieres and the very, very scary statistics that for under 50, major broadcast networks were down by an average of 15% from last year. Over 50 didn't change much, which, you know, there were some articles that came out subsequently that also said that basically old people watch television. That's it. It's all left. That under, you know, 49 demographic is falling off. And that is obviously the most valuable from an advertising perspective. Cable dropped about um, 1% or so, but still remaining pretty steady. And, you know, at the end of the day, the question is, what does this mean for advertisers and what does this mean from an advertising revenue perspective? If we look at the networks themselves, NBC was actually up 11%. They're performing quite well. ABC down 19, CBS are down 25%, and Fox down 24% year over year uh, for their fall season TV premieres. So what does it mean for ratings drops? Well, you know, a lot of these, these premieres uh, received great bounties in the upfronts. You know, advertisers bought on minimum Gary Taser. At that point in time, quite often, the digital appending, adjunct media was given as a loss leader, right? So it was a value add to a, a premium 30 second buy in the second quarter of the year. And uh, that included second screen, digital inventory, et cetera. What's happening, it's quite interesting, is some networks are seeing that some programming, CW in particular, which targets the sweet spot of millennial demographic, ESPN has had a couple experiences, they're seeing that their online audience is actually exceeding their tune-in audience for live broadcast. Um, and by the way, all the numbers I'm talking about don't include time shifting or VOD, just so you know. Um, that being said, what, is that, what does this all mean, right? So what's happening is that by virtue of the fact that online audiences are becoming more substantive, you know, TV guys are looking at ways to actually create value and assess uh, the, the value of that audience and, and position it as premium against their TV inventory. But what's been happening is the digital space, specifically premium video uh, providers like the portals, AOLs, Yahoo's the world, et cetera, have been trying to forge this GRP rating for digital video so as to be able to tap into the TV dollars and drive share shift. And that's really been, you know, we've been talking about GRP for video now for a little over a year, and it's really started out the genesis of it was thought to be because we wanted to tap into the big TV budgets, right? It was to drive that share shift. But the reality is that now what we're seeing is with things like ratings down, um, we're, we read an article from Nielsen uh, that was about Nielsen's online ratings, their OCR, online campaign ratings program from October 8th and at age, was basically about where uh, the fact that TV broadcasters want to use online ratings to leverage their premium online video for make goods on their TV buys when they don't deliver to the commits they had uh, with the upfronts, which I think is an incredible sort of amalgamation of events. If we talk about this need to actually close the gap and continue to retain the premium value on the video inventory versus what the CPMs, equivalent CPMs are on TV, when gross rating points are reducing, you know, this is a, a very challenging position for the industry because it seems like everybody is sort of trying to get to the same point of arrival, but tends to take tactics that are in conflict with one another. Uh, you know, I just want to talk about a general monetization right now. And one of the biggest challenges we have in the industry, specifically for content owners, is that the way that TV is bought is so different from the way that digital is bought, right? Upper funnel, lower funnel, performance, et cetera. And that's one of the reasons that we have this attempt to define equivalency for premium video as it equa uh, as it re relates to television, right? So what is a digital audience and how is an eyeball and digital uh, equivalent, what's that ratio or multiple from you know online to or tablet or mobile to television and the ability to actually find that and draw that line in the sand makes it a lot easier for purveyors of digital only content or TV only content to sort of aggregate a portfolio of media and sell it at a premium value 
It's scary though, because if we do define equivalency or someone like Comscore and Nielsen comes out and comes up with a multiple that a certain number of online eyeballs is equivalent to a TV audience eyeball, that's scary. And I think that's going to have a, a huge implications downstream for the industry as far as putting a line in the sand as to how media equates. And it doesn't take into consideration the two-way communications that exist within a digital medium and that feedback loop and that response path and what engagement really means for a brand. When we talk about buying, TV digital. There's now a third dimension, and this is we had the the RTB summit. I talked at length with Brett Wilson from Tube Mogul, and it was really really interested to learn from Brett, specifically with Tube Mogul's platform, that uh, more and more programmatic buying as it relates to online video, which is different from display, which was sort of the the first stage of maturation for RTB and programmatic buying, is about upper funnel. It's about reach and frequency, and about being able to actually drive to a higher you know soft brand metrics like recall, purchase intent, uh, awareness, et cetera. And this is a, an incredible disruption for digital because typically in the, in the world of digital advertising and display, which is what's driven programmatic buying to success, we're really buying on very clear, straightforward, objective uh, performance metrics. I think video as a whole is at an incredible point where there's this perfect storm coming that at some point we're gonna see a decline in the TV audience that is notable enough and have substantive data points that are that um, the audiences are being cannibalized by the by Google and their investment in premium content and Netflix. That we're going to have to actually start making hard decisions as an industry as to how we value and evaluate this medium. I think it's a great opportunity to continue the discussion, but more and more to be eyes open and very aware and listening to those that have doubled down on premium content and premium content only, not distributed through linear channels, and look at what they're doing and where they're heading because they're actually following the dollars and that tells us where the industry is going to head most importantly. Questions, comments, reach out to me at ashley at furious-minds.com. Let's keep the conversation going. I don't have the answers, but I have lots of questions and would love to talk to you about them. Thanks.